here we have a little more on uh, on this idea of modularity and building these units. Here we have this rack sitting in a container, the shipping container stand. That you know, this is probably this was um, designed. The size of a shipping container was designed around the size of roads, the size of engines, and what cornflakes needed. But that now defines the unit of computing. It's the shipping container, and so um, this shows how you know. Making progress requires building on um, on other technologies, because this is the commodity world. Cloud computing is enormously expensive. It has to make use of economies of reuse of technologies from other fields. Here we have an actual picture of this, showing the, oh, here we have all the linkage points for the containers. And here we have a little picture of how, the, uh, how these containers are carefully Aligned in and out, so in a fashion they can be taken in and out conveniently. Presumably, if enough nodes found in the container, you haul up your um, truck front end, and drag it away, and send it back to contain to the place which mends containers. I don't know whether it's an industry mending containers or it's all just done by the same companies that build the systems in the first place. Here we have the. Again, these are Microsoft slides, because uh, Microsoft's actually a little more open about what they do than some of the other companies. Google's especially mysterious, and Amazon is pretty mysterious. So here you had the various um, form, and this time uh, was probably changed now. This was 2012, around May, so that's uh, almost two years old. They at that time had four centers in America. Uh, Two in Europe and two in Asia, these two major ones. And here's some uh, presumably con content distribution network nodes, which are sort of subsidiaries for um, aggregating traffic to these uh, cloud centers. Here's some comments on the greenness. <coughs> you know, in that 2006 survey, I believe that the average so called PUE. Uh, which was the ratio of the power used by this facility to the power that actually does computing, which was um, used to be three, is now actually getting nearer and nearer, 1.1. And uh, around 2010, it was actually 1.8. So it's just drastically decreased. And that is partly, I mean, clouds are just shamed everybody else into making it better. And um, so here we had the, we showed you the fourth generation, which gets away, um, it makes everything as modular as possible. There's a link for that here. And the third generation is that container-based systems we actually gave a picture of at Chicago. Um, it's very difficult to find out actually anything quantitative in some areas on the web, because it's all secret. Google only indirectly told us in 2010 that they had around a million servers, because they told you something about electricity use, about how good they were, and indirectly told you in that fashion how many servers they had. So in 2010, there were around 30 million servers worldwide, and Google had 3% of the world's servers. And um, Google actually had 3% of the servers, but used less than 1% of the total power, because Google's far more efficient on average, as I pointed out. Uh, clouds are around 1.1, and this says in 2010, if you average over everything, which includes some catastrophes, it's over three, the um, PUE of the standard server. So, at this stage of 2010, I estimated clouds were 20%. Obviously now, maybe near a 30% of the total server uh, account. Uh, because you know, they keep on, you remember I had a, on the last unit, I had a comments on the how, you know, the size of Amazon Web Services and their revenues. The revenues drastically jumping corresponds to the number of computers drastically jumping. So, of course, they help by having big tenants like Netflix must have a lot of computers being used to stream all those movies. Um, here is this. Uh, Remember we had 30 million total in 2010? Well, here's an estimate in 2014 to 15, another 10 million servers we added to cloud. So that 30 million ain't gonna be 30 million. 
Um, and uh, actually, here you can see uh, right. This is a 2013 August talk. We have five U.S. centers for Microsoft, two in Europe, and three in Asia. There were two in Asia, two in Europe, four in the U.S. And in the slide before. Um, this is a comment here from Dennis Gannon on some of the important areas such as deep learning, which is revolutionizing, and natural language translation, and face recognition, and things like that. Remarkable. And lots of interesting biological. Here, there's the gene wide association studies. This is all AI and machine learning. Those are the nuts and bolts of the cloud. That's the analytics part of the cloud. If we want to look at sizing, then when this was written, the largest advertised cloud computing centers were 100,000 servers. Now we expect them to be nearer a million. And that's what it says here. 2014 will be a million. So the largest supercomputer, which actually no longer is Sequoia, uh, but it's uh, the second largest. Uh, China has the largest. This is still, I think, the largest in the US, the Sequoia machine. It has uh, a million chips, which is, you might say, a 50, 000, sorry, 100,000 chips, 1.6 million cores. Uh, this is a so-called blue gene, which has rather, which has um, uh, whatever, 16 cores per node. It has uh, pretty small cores. It's unusually small. Very, very efficient, compact supercomputer system. And it had um, eight megawatts of power. It's very efficient power-wise. And um, still, it's only 50,000. If you take a typical server with two nodes. Uh, it would correspond to 50,000 of those, so it's not so big. So I would say the largest supercomputer is at best a percent of the total computing system. Here's some um, more details, a comparison between um, um, data centers and supercomputers. So we have 100K. Um, servers in Chicago for cloud, and um, that's uh, that's actually 2,000 uh, servers per container. A little different from the estimate I gave before. I think I said uh, up to 1,000, so this is 2,000. And that Blue Waters, which is another supercomputer I gave you, Sequoia, which was 50K. Uh, um, Sorry, but it's actually in terms of, no, it's um, 50K 32 core systems, because it was 1.6 million cores, 100,000 nodes. And if you arrange that, it's, I don't think this is how Blue Dean is packaged, but you arrange them as, as most systems are, commodity systems, as two nodes per, two, core, two chips per, per, per node, then you get, um, you get, Sequoia is in this 50K number, just has more powerful computing power. So anyway, here we have supercomputers, 50 to 100K uh, servers, but we have a single data center of the same size, and they say Microsoft is now going up to a million. Uh, the network architecture is pretty different. Um, supercomputers are optimized but uh, for bandwidth between nodes. Uh, data centers are optimized the bandwidth of the internet, because clouds are connected to the internet. Um, so, data centers make a lot of use of in-memory caching, this memcache technology, or, which is an example of the in-memory in, in, um, in database. Whereas supercomputers typically have a separate data farm and some methodology like GPFS, which is the parallel file system, to link this, the uh, data farm to the supercomputer. So. Here we have the data center network, relatively simple. Here you have a fancy factory network, which is how you do supercomputers. These are optimized for high bandwidth, low latency between uh, the nodes of the supercomputer. So now we're going on to application. That's the end of our architecture study. Let's go on to this next lesson. Thank you very much.